wow. Episode six of Agatha All Along. What a massive reveal, right? Honestly, I think it's one of the biggest moments in the MCU so far. Yeah. Maybe I'm hyping it up too much, but it really felt like a lot of the mysteries we've been holding on to finally started to unravel. Nice, what I love even more is that despite all the questions and secrets Marvel has layered in, keeping us fans guessing, Agatha all along is staying surprisingly true to the comics. We finally get William Kaplan, and yep, we've officially got Wiccan. Just like your mother. Just like in the Marvel comics. Lilia Caldera's role was a big shocker too, and there are plenty more important details we've got to dive into from this episode. But before we jump in, if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We're constantly breaking down theories, reviews, and the latest updates from the MCU and all your favorite superhero shows and movies. All right, now let's get into it. You two never stay put. Episode six really takes us into the backstory of William Kaplan and Billy Maximoff. And yeah, I'm calling out both names because in this episode, we need to see them as two separate characters. Remember that conversation between Alice Wu Gulliver and Teen in episode three? You know, the one where they talk about Alice's tattoo, which her mom gave her when she was 13 to protect her from a family curse. By episode four, we got the full scoop on that curse and Alice even managed to break it. But here's where it gets interesting. Teen jumps in during that convo and says he also had a lot going on when he turned 13. All happened to me at 13 too. Now the number 13 is considered unlucky in a lot of cultures, right? But for Alice and Teen, it wasn't just unlucky, it was tragic. For Alice, 13 was the age she became a witch and had to deal with all the craziness that came with it. Even though she had the same ones. And let's not forget, her mom's a big time musician. So Alice grew up in the spotlight. But for Teen, turning 13 was heartbreaking. That was his last birthday as William Kaplan. Yeah, you heard that right. He died at 13. At first, I thought this whole age 13 thing that Teen mentioned was just a callback to WandaVision, kind of like a clue connecting back to Billy Maximoff's tragic moments. I mean, we all remember the WandaVision finale, right? The fight between Wanda and Agatha, all the chaos in Westview, and the saddest part, Billy and Tommy disappearing when the hex came down. That moment pretty much ended the Maximoff family's happy story. But nope, this isn't about Billy Maximoff. It's about William Kaplan. He's the son of Jeff and Rebecca Kaplan, a cardiologist and psychologist couple from Eastview. Back then, William was just a normal kid, like any other teenager. And yeah, he probably identified as straight at that point. His family was religious and so was he. But still, he was hyped for his 13th birthday party. And here's the thing. William had a real fascination with magic. Of course, nobody would have guessed that one day he'd grow up to be a powerful sorcerer. So the first person to really know what was going to happen to William wasn't even him. It was Lilia Calderu. Yep, you got it. Lilia was part of William's life way back in the day. She's actually the fortune teller who was at his 13th birthday party. After reading William's future, Lilia saw that his life would take a tragic turn splitting his future into two possible paths. Even his reflection showed him as teen, the version of him we now see walking the witch's road. Lilia probably wanted to warn William about all of this, but since he had asked her not to reveal too much about his future, she kept it to herself. But she did do something important to protect him. Right then and there, Lilia started drawing sigils and casting spells to make sure no other witch could hear William's true identity. Remember Agatha's explanation about sigils in episode four? If you recall, sigils don't just affect the object they're placed on, but they also influence the witch who cast them. That's why even now, Lilia doesn't remember what she did to William that night, and she has no recollection of William eventually becoming teen. That birthday party, which started out so perfect, didn't last long. Something happened in Westview, and they had to cut the party short. What followed was a tragic event, closely tied to the final battle in WandaVision. On their way back to Eastview, William, Jeff, and Rebecca Kaplan saw the Hex starting to disappear. Wanda Maximoff was releasing Westview from her chaos magic. For William's parents, it was a terrifying sight, and it caused chaos on the roads. Right at the border of Eastview, their car got into an accident, and sadly, William died instantly. Man, this was heartbreaking. 
but we didn't even get a moment to feel the weight of it. At the same time, the hex was fading and Billy and Tommy were vanishing too. And in that moment, William's lifeless body was taken over by Billy's soul. These are two incredibly sad moments happening at once. William's death in the accident and Billy and Tommy being erased from existence. But together, they created someone new, William Billy Kaplan. Why do I say someone new? Because neither William's past nor much of Billy's memories carried over into this version of Wiccan. The only thing that stuck with him was one thing, Tommy. Tommy was the first name Billy called out when he took over William's body, right as they were both being wiped from existence along with the hex. Maybe that's why it's the only thing he remembers. Medically speaking, he has complete amnesia. For three whole years, William's been on this intense journey, trying to piece everything together. Imagine living every day trying to figure out who you really are while pretending to be someone else. He knows deep down he's not just William Kaplan anymore. He's Billy Maximoff. But the world around him only sees William, so he has to play along. All that confusion, all the unanswered questions, he's constantly digging, trying to make sense of his fragmented memories. Something else, something more. His search for answers led him down some wild paths. He wanted to understand everything. Who exactly is Tommy? What's the truth behind Wanda and Vision? All these questions haunted him. And the more he dug, the more he realized that everything was pointing back to Agatha Harkness and Ralph Boner. Now, Ralph Boner, that name probably rings a bell, right? You'll remember him as the guy who was controlled by Agatha during the whole Westview incident. Agatha used her magic on him, making him act like Pietro, Wanda's brother, even though the real Pietro died back in Avengers Age of Ultron. For three years, Ralph was left in this weird state of being, living a miserable life, haunted by everything that went down. I mean, can you imagine having your identity completely hijacked, only to be left to pick up the pieces afterward? Poor Ralph was just an innocent guy in the wrong place at the wrong time. After all that magic and manipulation, he was just stuck, struggling to reclaim his life. But Agatha? Man, she got it even worse. Remember how Wanda, as the Scarlet Witch, left her trapped in that mental prison at the end of WandaVision? Yeah, she never got out of that. While everyone else in Westview returned to their normal lives, Agatha stayed trapped under Wanda's spell unable to escape. She spent three years lost in a haze, not even recognizing herself anymore. She was like a puppet, stuck in a delusion, replaying the same twisted scenario over and over again, unable to break free. When William finally shows up at Agatha's doorstep, it's heartbreaking. You can see the toll these past few years have taken on her. She's been trapped in this endless nightmare, completely disconnected from reality. And you start to feel for her, like, yeah, she did some messed up things, but no one deserves to live in that kind of torment for three years. It's so, enough to drive anyone insane. So what, I've just been... William's arrival might be her first glimpse of hope in a long time, but it also marks the beginning of something bigger. Seeing Agatha in that state makes you realize how much damage has been done, not just to the people of Westview, but to everyone touched by this chaos. Everything that went down in episode six ties up so many of the mysteries we've been wondering about since the start of Agatha all along. It's like all the pieces finally clicked into place. Plus, it totally explains all the hints we saw in that mid-season trailer from a few days ago. I'm Billy Maximoff. And you know what? It really strengthens the connection between Agatha all along and WandaVision. It's like they're weaving the two stories together in a way that makes everything even more impactful. What's wild is that we finally get to see just how many amazing things Marvel's been teasing. But at the same time, there were moments that we all thought were going to be huge, but they turned out to be surprisingly simple. Like, remember all those fan theories about Teen having these insane powers, maybe even inherited from Wanda Maximoff herself? We were all thinking, Teen's gonna break Agatha out of Scarlet Witch's spell because of some super powerful witchcraft, right? Turns out, William only needed to say a simple spell he'd written in his notebook to break it. Something that, honestly, anyone could have done. Talk about unexpected. Then there's Ralph Boner, 
So many people thought he was Mephisto after seeing that mid-season trailer. We were all hyped, thinking Ralph might be hiding some big secret. But nope, it's just Ralph Boner, and he's depressed. I mean, I can't be the only one who didn't see that coming. Are you okay? And don't even get me started on all the theories around that sigil on team. Some of us thought it was tied to Billy, Wanda, or even Mephisto. But guess what? It was just a simple sigil from Lilia, something she threw together and then completely forgot about. That one really threw me for a loop. But here's what I really loved. Marvel nailed Wiccan's character. Like, they didn't just introduce him, they brought him in a way that's incredibly accurate to the comics. And not only that, they did it in such a strong and unique storyline. It really pulls from the ending of WandaVision, making it clear that WandaVision wasn't just the wrap up for Scarlet Witch's story. It's setting up so many important things for the future of the MCU. And I gotta say, if you've been watching some of our recent videos, you probably remember me talking about the rumor that Marvel Studios is planning a spin-off from Agatha all along. That rumor, which came from Daniel RPK, was all about Marvel focusing on the search for Tommy. Well, guess what? They didn't keep us waiting long. Just days after that rumor dropped, we see in episode six how serious Marvel is about Tommy's character. If you were expecting Billy to be on a mission to revive Wanda, at the end of Witches' Road, think again. It's not about Wanda at all. Billy doesn't even know Wanda, aside from what he's observed. The real reason Billy's on this journey along Witches' Road it's all about finding Tommy, his twin brother. That's his main focus. And honestly, it just makes everything so much more emotional. The connection between these two characters is going to be key going forward. And I can't wait to see where Marvel takes it from here. I see this as a brilliant setup for the ending. It seems like we might not see Wanda or Billy directly in Agatha all along, at least not until the very end. Marvel Studios appears to be saving those surprises for upcoming films and series. If we dive a bit deeper into Tommy's story in the comics, like Billy, Tommy also finds a new body to inhabit. That body belongs to Thomas Shepard, a bit of a mischievous kid. The way Billy and Tommy reunite could make for an exciting storyline that's part of a bigger narrative rather than just a couple of episodes in a miniseries. I mean, the Young Avengers could be the perfect setting for their reunion, but it looks like Billy's journey and maybe even Vision's quest to find Tommy could kick off in a few spin-off miniseries after Agatha All Along wraps up. Honestly, I can't wait to see how they continue Billy Maximoff's story. What about you? What do you love or dislike about Billy Maximoff, aka Wiccan, in Agatha All Along? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Oh, and I want to apologize for not posting a video the past few days. I hope you can understand there's been a lot to sort out in Earth 616, right? If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit that button. There are still three episodes left of Agatha All Along, which means there are plenty of mysteries left to discuss and unravel. Subscribing ensures you won't miss out on any of this information. Next up, I'll try to share some theories, opinions, and unique insights you all have dropped in the comments of this video and previous ones in a special episode. If you wanna join in, feel free to leave your theories in the comments and let's get the MCU fan community discussing them in the next video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.